Merci.
Very good. It's very good. Uh, I, I just would like to, to say before two things which make that this master class is a bit special. And one of the first things concerns this sonata. Do you know when it was written by Beethoven? Good. <laughs> <laughs> the sonata was written by Beethoven in 1814. And do you know when it was published? No. It was published in 1815. And you know in which month it was published? In June. So June 1815, you know? Waterloo. So it, it, it's, it's something funny somewhere. Uh, the second thing will come later. OK. <laughs> yeah, but because it, concern, it doesn't concern this sonata. Uh, Beethoven wrote the sonata. It's one of the. It's the first of the six last sonata, uh, Opus 90, and which is in two movements, like like the the last one, Opus 111. And uh, it's already the 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 last uh, the last Beethoven. Usually we say concerning the piano sonata that the 10, 12 first sonata are written like a string quartet, after it's the full orchestra, and the six line sonata are like a philosophic uh, uh, feeling and uh, meaning. And uh, he wrote it for uh, the Count uh, Lishnovsky, who had to get married. And it's a pity we, we, cannot, we cannot hear the second movement, but the timing is like timing, because the second movement is a sort of dialogue very tender with the, his, the, his future uh, wife of the Count Lishnovsky. But the first movement, and even if we didn't talk about this in the lesson, you already feel the, the, the character, which is a, a sort of uh, uh, tension uh, uh, between the, the reason and the heart, uh, with op very oppos opposite uh, colors and feelings, and this is, uh, this is the, the, most, the most important thing, and you, you got it. Now, we have to take care about, about few things concerning, of course, sometimes the color, a bit the tempo, because with Beethoven, when we touch the tempo, we destroy the structure. And here, there are one place where you slow down clearly, and one place where you rush clearly. So we will try to make it, to make it uh, at the same tempo. And uh, you have many fermata. You know what is a fermata? Huh? Yeah. You know what it means? In, it, it comes from, in Italian. Eh? It, the, the, the place where the bus stops. Some of them are so short that nobody can go out or go inside the bus if, if, if you don't respect them. So. So, so much. So you have to take care, especially after ti do do di, pim pim. Of course, it's we have to wait in proportion of uh, with the tempo we have. Uh, it can be longer, it can be shorter, but we can. We we have to understand absolutely that it's it's a moment where music is a bit in suspension, and if it's too short or if it's too long, the phrase stops. But if you do it exactly, we can, we, we can stay and uh, absolutely uh, connected with what will, uh, what will come now. But if, if it's not the right value, it's a bit a problem. OK, concerning, concerning the dynamic, it's not bad. One of a few little things, we do it. I think your, your first forte could be a, a bit more clear with the up, what I call the up-down. Yum, pa, ta, tim, pam. 
feel always because after it's like a, like a with the the final of Wallstein uh, uh, that Yampa, but in the uh, in the final of Wallstein it's more clear because he writes a point on the a bit, okay. but after he writes also a point and the sforzato and here. It, 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 make, it does the same as that. Tam, pa. See? So it's the same idea in the beginning, not exaggerate, but a bit more comfortable. Just, just fall in the keys. Yeah. I, I would like something like this. Yum, 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 you are too voluntary somewhere. Forte, which express something again with Beethoven, it's always noble something. But not not, not too tense. Try. Better. Very good. Can you do the second one? Yum pa da dum. Yeah, the fourth one. Ah, yeah. You you stop you stop your a bit. If yum pa, okay. If you stop the bow, da da. We have not the expression. Yum yum pi yum pi. Relax everything because you you play it a bit. Feel completely free in your body. Okay, yes. It, it's a bit better. It's a bit better. I would like to, f to, to feel that the pleasure you have to do. Hum, oh. Yes. Yeah, and don't play the second less, huh? Good. Yeah, okay. Don't forget that the, the diminuendo reach the pianissimo. So you are a bit too loud at the end. Less, less. Good. Much better. Uh, now, what is missing is that the first, the first part of the, the second phrase, you have a crescendo, nothing more. The second is you have a forte piano. So do something different. Don't play twice the same. Okay, but. Careful in the in the balance of your crescendo because you you open suddenly too much. Okay, go to, go to the tidin go to the forte piano. Yes, exactly. Yeah. If not, it's a bit flat. If you do the twice the same, and. Change your pedal here. The bass change, so it's not the same harmony. Mm -hmm. And here, absolutely the same. OK, uh, last time, and with the fermata. But you 
should be more clear with the fact that this is just a beat, and this is for that. Yum, more conviction. If you play tam, okay, yum, yum, like some uh, uh, very important thing uh, to, uh, to say. I mean, if you just play a pam, yum, more contrast. Nothing could be more piano. Could be more piano. Yeah, pianissimo. Yeah. Okay. It's better, but I want more the second, especially at the right. Much better, but first time you were slowing down so much in here. So this is a, it's a doubt from yeah. You pass from this question succession of questions. And some feeling a, a bit dramatic comes absolutely on the forte, not no more than forte. But if you play, it, I have strictly not the feeling of the drama. But just forte. And this is in tempo. You begin the ritenuto. So everything is written. That's the big, uh, with Beethoven especially. If we, we should just play what he wrote. And uh, finally, it's the most difficult. Nothing. Exactly. You change, yeah. You change little by little the character. It's very good. And yum pum 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 pum, as you did this time. Your pop pop poppy. It's already uh, too too heavy, and it, I think it's not the feeling. It's fighting a bit. Not too loud. Just one forte. But yum pop 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 pinta. Yes. Exact.
Not so bad, just careful. It's forte with a succession of sforzato, but we have not to go to the fortissimo, and especially the left. Because if you play immediately, your cello, cello, viola, a bit less than the first violin. Just after the big forte, don't disappear. Ta ta, pa pa pa, a bit more clear, like winds, flute, pa pa pa, flute playing play, piano, but flute. If you just are pa pa, don't play in a neutral. Pronounce it. Just the end. Ta. It's ta ta. Yes, you rush first time. Yeah. Careful, it's a long crescendo. You have time. It's already better than the first time. But careful. If your dynamic increase too quickly, you cannot reach the fortissimo. It's a very, very, very long line until the fortissimo. Just the beginning of, of the crescendo. And try to control this with your heels. Wonderful, perfect, yes, but we need this. And careful, this, this instrument can, can be the, the most incredible orchestra, but it can be also, it can kill the music very quickly if when we, we enter in the, in the loud dynamics, we don't control with the ears. Mm -hmm. After it was very good, and it's more or less the same. Okay, I, I would like, Oh, yes, I would like the second movement, but we, we cannot. Uh, just the coda. Pop, 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 uh, yes, but <laughs> that's exactly the opposite. Uh, you have to control the diminuendo, and it's very long. Look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, fourteen bars before the pianissimo. With your. But it's you, 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 you need a bit, pra, a bit to practice it. At, after, never play ta 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 ti ti ta ta ti because you stop the phrase. We have we we must understand that the phrase continue. If you if you play a small accent, you don't play it a big, but you stop ta 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 finished. The phrase, the phrase is dead. Yes, very good. Yeah, yeah, it's so beautiful. And it's the reason why we have absolutely not to make 
it's the first and only time where there is not ritenuto on fermata. So, so fantastic. Try, go up. Don't, don't, don't try to finish. Yeah, I have a still a bit time. Yeah, and one, keep it one bit. It, it was very good, but too short. Yeah, yeah. Fermata could be a bit, uh, a bit more. Okay, very good. Yeah, it's, uh, you, it's not far. Careful. Dynamic tempo, always, always with Beethoven. The character is it's quite understandable. Okay, we, we have not to make a big uh, speech to understand uh, when he is tender, when he is mysterious, when, when he is uh, in the torment, uh, when, he, when he is happy. Okay, but careful the, uh, the control of the, of the dynamics. Thank you. For timing reason, we decide to, to make it a bit shorter, and maybe it will not play a, until the end. But this is the second special event of the masterclass, because to have the father and the son in the same masterclass, this doesn't happen so often.
this is the place where we decide to stop. Good. <laughs> now you release the tension and you start again. <laughs> Relax and in the character immediately. Yeah. Uh, scherzo, scherzo is basically something we have to we have to play in in the sense we have to play a game, but it's a sort of hallucinated dance with uh, with Chopin. Huh? It's uh, it's uh, uh, we play, but with the feelings and with all the all the human uh, uh, being. It's not just uh, just a, a piece, uh, a demonstrative piece. So we have we have to to be inside immediately. The beginning is sort of also a question, a dramatic question. Okay, second time, third time, try. So bad. Yeah. Play, play the, the beginning a bit more mysterious. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The pro, the also between the first group and the second group. Three steps. Okay, and careful where you play the pedal. Dam, papa, not too early. After the B, not before. Talk about this once already. It's just for legato and in tempo. It means and the risoluto which follows can be a bit more uh, tense with even with the tempo. But it's too too chilly playing together. Yeah, but sing it. Yeah, okay, same, careful, pedal. Yeah, exactly. And change the character immediately. You sing. And immediately some hallucinated dance. Okay, it's not bad, but I I don't I don't feel the fire. I know this is difficult, but it's a heroic feeling to do this. It's difficult, so if you play, I want to feel the feeling. Wait too long here. You better. 
No, it's the same piece. Connect. Play. Yes. Change. Yeah, take more time to say mi sol fa mi mi fa mi. This is an advantage of romantic music, of a scherzo, that we can we can be really f more free than with a classical sonata. So. Just a little, the time to, to, to say the, the, the thing. It, it's a tender, a tender phrase. And just after the devil comes back. Yes. this, as you see, is a long crescendo. And here it's the top. I want, I want to feel this. You play a bit. OK. I don't care. Miss, but don't miss the crescendo. Yeah. Much better. When you finish, you have two rest, and after you have to play for this. I want to understand that you change the feeling. Breathe a bit more and play more. It's not bad. It was just a bit too, too, too dry. Play pinch of pedal at the end. Yeah. You, the, the young generation, you don't know that you have to breathe. Breathe. If you don't breathe, you, you, kill, you kill the phrase. You kill the music. If you were a singer, I, I, I tell my student every, every day, I am, I am sad that you are not a singer. So they look at me like this and say, what, what do you mean? Because I said, if you were a singer, it makes already 10 minutes that you should be dead. <laughs> because they don't, they don't breathe. Breathe. Same. Yeah. Change. Change. Yeah. Yeah. This is it's like a, a, a horn backstage. Yeah. I don't play it better. Ocean. Suddenly I see the sea. Change.
Yeah, but if you wait, you kill, you kill the surprise. It begins here, the ralentando, not, not on the rest. Yeah, uh, Maxime, it's very, a bit strange. Your top, po, po, po. There, I know there is no legato line, but there is no staccato. Maybe ti do do do. Play a sort of po, portato legato, but which makes a line a singing line. If it's a po 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 po, ti do do do. Sing, sing. It's a waterfall. Da, da, ba. Very, very fluent, very clear. OK. Could be a bit more clear, but well, this is boutique. We will practice. But feel it amabile, uh, clear, uh, smiling. It's a sort of decoration somewhere, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's al already better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, I told you, but it, it's a bit better, but you wait too long. Ta 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 ti ba da ba da ba tam ba da ba da ba ya mi ra ba da ba. You don't begin too fast, but begin immediately. Okay, and maybe maybe not too fast. Pi da ba 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 da ba. I prefer this. Yeah, the train is already passed. I think you, you took the habit to, to, to do this so fast that now, when it's question to do it only in tempo, you're, you have the reflex to, to, of the speed, and it, it's not, not, clear, not clear in us. Can we do one, just one, the, the one you want, not too fast, and make a melody. OK. Very good. Okay, and try not to make a crescendo in the middle. Pida ba da ba da ba da ba. Yeah, it's fa it's falling. It, it, it doesn't not, it doesn't go again up, and it just pida ba da ba da ba da ba da ba. Yes, yes. Never forget. Every uh, it's very difficult, but any kind of difficult thing we have to do, it's always the ears who give the the order. It's never the fingers who give the order, order to the ears. It's, we have always to go in this, in this way. So I think maybe if you do it a bit like this slowly and making, remaking a melody, because maybe in the beginning it was, you did it, but now it's Okay, it's a waterfall, but it's nice if, the, if it's clear water. If the water is a bit too dark, uh, <laughs> 
OK. OK, this is more or less the same. Uh, that was quite good. OK, but after, after we go back to the... OK, we, we play the, the sostenuto once. Uh, down but go down and stay stay clear yeah? it's better when you you play the the, the short one always make it make it a sort never never rhythmic it's in the line yeah, okay, it's, it's better, a compromise now because you slow down a bit, in between. Okay, yeah. I know it's, it's, it's the problem because it's, we have, we have to, to do it in tempo, but it must sing. Do it once without rhythm. Just like this. Okay, do it with the rhythm. Hey, yes. Hey, yes. Which, me which means that at the origin, your ears didn't hear a melody. Because when you do it ti, da, da, di, melodic, after, with the rhythm, you do it perfectly. Ears. Ears. <laughs> OK. Well, after it's more or less the same. Good. Character and, OK, this was a, a little bit practice, but well, it, it's coming. Thank you.
just I, I feel your guitar your guitar in the beginning are, are should be a bit a bit more is a bit too poop like a like a cat who makes this not this okay try a bit more modern not louder huh? modern That's, that's already much better. Uh, he, he wrote this in Les Arpèges Très Serrés. It's that your arpeggio should be. Even this one. I know it's difficult. OK, it's a, a French composer writing Spanish music. And he, 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 was, he, he went to Spain, but later. But all of this was in his imagination. But, well, we need, we need the colors of, of the Spanish flag. Huh? Red, yellow, <laughs> red. So, uh, and yeah, project it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, I know the artists, they know this very well. Huh? <laughs> change the color, change the planet. Huh? The, 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 don't hesitate. But the arpeggio must be still, even in the piano. Okay. Castagnette. Uh, yam, Nothing. Always. And. But if you play. I want to be surprised. much better. You can play even more piano the piano, but the beginning is really fine. It must not be loud because he, he wrote mezzo forte, okay. Mezzo forte, but with accent and, and this You know what, what is, what is a, uh, uh, a gracioso? No? Oh. Los españoles lo saben, eh? No? Well, uh, Gracioso in the, in, the, in the Spanish culture is a personage uh, uh, which is a, a sort of, it's not a clown, it's not a, uh, a buffon a bit, it uh, is a bit ridiculous, it's a sort of compromise between all of this. Huh? Voilà. So the purpose is here, here is that this, this Gracioso will, in the middle of the piece, Declare his love, and he's a, he's a, a man, uh, a, a mature man, you know, well, quite uh, well, mature. Uh, he, he will declare his love to a, to a young a young person. So that's the the it's the, the ridiculous uh, thing is a bit uh, turned a bit round. So he will, he will be really uh, uh, under under the under the window. Huh? She's here uh, under the, the balcony. Uh, 
con amore. And in the back, we continue to hear the fest. But very far, very far. Okay, and finally, as she doesn't open the window, he he try a last he makes a last try. Okay, that's full of love. That I am so sad that you don't open the way your window for me. Okay. <laughs> and finally, okay. Bum, bum, bum. Da, da, da. It changed and now it's a bit. And we hear again the fast far far. But at a few hundred meters from here, it, 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 your attack is very good, but it can be more piano. And from now, it will be lyric, so lyric. Good. So, well. <laughs> okay. You make a love declaration. Go on. Yeah, even even more. Yeah, oh yeah. Not too, not not too slow. Yeah, it's it's a sort of vocalise. Or if you prefer. You can do it at the guitar if you don't want to sing. You can do, di, do. It's a glissando on one string, or the cello. Do, do. Feel this. Do. Try. Yes, I like this. No, your bass must be more piano. Try again. Yes, and now shh. Yeah, it, it's possible. Uh, it's very, very good. You understand perfectly. Yes, I, I said this the last week. Bashkirov says we can always play more piano. But we have to push our ears until the limit of, of this dynamic. Because if not, if we stay always by this, uh, we are, the, 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 the dynamic scale is poor. We can play a huge forte. And uh, if, you, if you make a so big difference between the singer who is and the little intermed is far too deep. But very far, very far. We must create this sort of perspective with the sound. You know, it's like a, like with a painting. We have the su the subject, the main subject in front with colors extremely clear. After in the middle, it's a bit more, a bit less clear. And 
at the, uh, in, the, in the back, the sky and the, and the mountains, they have the same color. We cannot see any difference. So it's exactly the same, the same thing. But force absolutely your ears to go as far as this. Because now, now it's wonderful. I, I would like the, a, a bit the... Yeah, just from exaggerated. Really, it's yeah. Very good. Yeah. The tempo. Stay far. Stay far. Now, bum, 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 bum. Good. And more. And nothing. Not bad. Even if you do it uh, in the tempo, yam padabadam, I think if we play it exactly as it's written, pa pi da pi, the expression is a bit, uh, a, a bit poor somewhere. So I may tian ti da dam, feel it, uh, maybe anticipate a bit, ti da da da, and keep the da. Try. Yes. Yeah, and the very last, abandon it a bit. Yeah, minimum could be even more, more piano. Okay, after it's the same. After it's the same. Very good. Huh? Contrast, contrast, contrast. Uh, the second time. Very good. Don't lose the tempo. Yeah. It's not bad. It's not bad. I don't want that you wake me up. Triple, triple piano. Don't play. Play the diminuendo. Yeah. Very good. Shh. Don't make a, don't make any crescendo. Yeah. Don't kill your fingers. Your glissando were perfect. After it's very good. The end is, is absolutely nice. This very good. Nothing to say after. But a double forte and a triple piano. And in between these two extremes, you play. 
Thank you very much.
Thank you, thank you very much for giving me masterclass about David Popper. <laughs> <laughs> because I must uh, confess straight away that I think it's some, some kind of practical joke on part of Leonid and, and everybody else <laughs> making me, listening to this, it's of course pleasure, but uh, trying to give some kind of class about a piece which I don't know. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, uh, I mean, of course, I've heard it before, and there's a lot of familiar thematic material. But I must confess that, and I'm not proud of it, but unfortunately, at your age, I played much more football than cello, <laughs> uh, and missed a lot on music of cello composers, which actually I'm not trying to imply that it's not important, exactly opposite. It's very important at certain stage of your development to do more of this stuff. However, <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, of course, we're cellists are not as lucky as pianists, for example forget about violinists in between, but uh, I mean, there, there are so many great, incredible pianists who were great composers at the same time. Rachmaninoff, Chopin, Liszt, and quite a few others. There are many fantastic cellists. Popper definitely was one of them. 
and many of them tried to write music and uh, did a lot of uh, very useful studies and stuff. Still, as far as the level of composition, it's, um, if I'm trying to be very generous, I would say it's second rate music compared to what, if we speak about Bach, Schubert, Beethoven, Mozart, and so on. Uh, probably third, uh, even, even this is, there is still quite a few composers in between. And <clears throat> this brings me to the point which probably for you it's very difficult to understand because you're 14 years old. 14, really? Fantastic. Anyway, uh, and of course you have all your life in front of you and you think it's endless and... Uh, uh, I don't know. My attitude is that no matter how long you will be able to live, life is too short to spend too much time and effort on third-rate music when there is so much incredible music, great music, which will never have enough time and energy to, to devote to. So I personally kind of uh, regret that I didn't do enough of certain stuff. In the same time, I don't miss it at all somehow. I don't know. I'm sorry. I know it's probably a totally wrong thing to say. But um, still, uh, it's a very charming virtuoso piece. It's, uh, do you play elephant dance as well? Um, yes? Yeah. yeah. See, compared to elephant dance, this is just you know, almost Schubert. Because, of course, it's, it's much more sophisticated, much more uh, refined. There are elephant dance, I never understood why people would play elephant dance. But OK, I guess there is some reason which I missed in life. Anyway, the point is that here, uh, like in any music, you should just try to find, if I can give you some advice, even though, as I said, I don't know the piece. It's a question of, of much more dynamic range, and, and uh, not only dynamic, dynamic to start with, but as well color-wise and expression-wise. I mean, even if you will go directly to the last page, it varies from piano in the beginning, then second, then pianissimo, and it eventually it comes to fortissimo, the same material. And uh, for me, the difference was really not uh, nearly enough. You have to try. I know it's, it's difficult. It's, it's uh, easier said than done, for sure. So that's why I'm certainly not going to try to show. But it's, it's um, anyway, my cello is just part of decorations here. So it's, it's, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to play, don't worry. The, the point is that um, uh, this is first step about just simply purely dynamic indications and trying to, to manage to expand your range dynamically. But as well, in between there's all kinds of things where, which you can surely still improve on, on a little bit more, you know. I mean, you're, you were born in France, you lived all your very not very long time in uh, life in France. Have you been to Hungary ever? Hungary, Hungary. Hungary yeah. <laughs> you, you've never been to Hungary. You know, my very first trip outside Soviet Union was to Budapest. And I've been there many times since. It's a very colorful country. And, uh, and paprika. And, uh, and of course, it's, it's in the music. It's, uh, you, I'm sure if only we could, could get uh, La Cato Shrobi here to give you this masterclass. He would just play for you and everything will be clear. The point is that you have to get a little more juice in there. And uh, molto espressione, con molto espressione. Here I see. A little bit more. Don't be too, too sophisticated. 
French. Uh, no, no, but it's, uh, it's wonderful. I mean, I love French music and French culture and uh, so many things about France. And, no, really, I'm serious and I'm not uh, being sarcastic. I'm totally serious. But uh, this is a little bit uh, something else which uh, could uh, give it a little more. Even more spark. You'll, anyway, you'll get with this piece, you get at the end always a big applause, everybody will be happy, and, and it's fine. Then again, still, I think you could add some more. You know, uh, there was great writer George Orwell. I don't know if you heard, I hope you did, but maybe not. He wrote uh, all kinds of interesting things, uh, and one uh, very sarcastic thing is called The Animal Farm. It's a parody on communism. No, I came from this side of the world. Where he, there's a famous phrase, that it's about animals, you know, supposedly. And famous phrase is, all animals are equal but some are more equal than others. <laughs> Which is true in life, that's how it is always. You know, it, so um, the same goes to music and to composers. And, and uh, yeah, of course, we have one hour for two people playing different kinds of music. So theoretically, it should be 30 minutes each. However, the other one is playing Bach. And you know, I'm sorry, to, with all due, my, uh, due respect due to Popper. Do you play Bach? No, not at all? He didn't, maybe, really, no, seriously. <laughs> no, 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 it's not funny, not, it's not funny at all. I mean, did you play some Bach suites? Ah, yes, okay, because I, I understood. No, because I'm, for a second I thought you said no. Okay, I'm, okay. And what, 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 how much did you play? What did you play already? Bach. Yes? Which, which Swedes did you play? You speak English, no? Maybe, should I switch to French? No? Ah, oh, I'm sorry, nobody warned me. I'm sorry, so. <laughs> So, okay, we start everything from the beginning. <laughs> and we do it in Russian now. Well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, excuse me, uh, désolé. That's about as much as I can say in French. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. So, so, what should we do then? Bach, you know? Be <laughs> Johann Sebastian. No, I mean, I'm sorry. No, it's in, no, in French you say, how do you pronounce in French? It's something different. It's back, back, uh, okay, back, okay. Okay, okay, anyway. He wrote six suites, you know. Says, for violon sol. Yeah? Did you play any? One, two, three? No, no, I mean, I'm not, I'm, it's not funny. What's so funny about I'm not trying to be funny, I'm sorry. I, one and three. and one and three, okay, very good. I mean, at your age, I try to remember. Probably about the same or something, maybe one and two. But no, no, no. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is, yeah, you know, there is another French composer, uh, not another French composer, of course, was Hungarian. There was a famous French composer, which kind of actually me on the level of uh, Popper, Offenbach. And you know, he, wrote, he was playing cello very well as well and wrote a lot of music for cello. You pro did you play Offenbach? Did you play? Concert Co <laughs> Militaire or something like this? No? No? No. Mm, okay, that's okay. Now, people sometimes ask me, do you play Offenbach? And I said, yes, I play Offenbach. <laughs> uh, very often, as often as possible. <laughs> yes, no, because, you know, you know you know, Vladimir Horowitz, I met Vladimir Horowitz, you know, the famous pianist. Yes, Vladimir Horowitz. Horowitz, so what do you do? Okay, I'm sorry, I can't. Anyway. Okay, anyway, okay, he knows, that doesn't matter. He liked very much Clementi. 
and he played a lot of Clementi sonatas. And once he, he was very friendly with Nathan Milstein, fantastic violinist. And once he told Milstein, Natanchik, you know, Clementi, people don't appreciate Clementi. Clementi is almost like Mozart. And Milstein told him, Valodia, at your age, at your level of career, you should play already Mozart. Why should you play almost like Mozart? <laughs> so I don't see why one should play Offenbach when there is Bach. So uh, that's my attitude. I'm sorry. I, I, uh, it's totally wrong thing to say to 14 year old. Do play popper. All 40, 48, he wrote 24 twice. Who knows? I don't even know. But uh, I think there's two books of 24 studies each, yes? Bach wrote 48 Preludes and Fugues. It's much better. Anyway, some of them are really very good, but you already have a very high level of technical facilities. So maybe you should think more about Bach or from, but anyway, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I, I have attitude problem and it's my problem, you know? I'm not pretending that I'm always right, not at all. But I cannot fake it, you see, I cannot tell you things which I don't believe in. So I, I'm here to share with you what I feel, what I know or understand or love. And uh, you, you are here to disagree with me uh, and forget about it, or maybe not, and think. And at some point, maybe you'll appreciate this, or maybe not. But we should try to spend more time with little, at least a little more time with Bach than, than Popper. But thank you very much anyway. It was very nice. <laughs>
Bravo, bravo. It's a pity that uh, we had to omit the other three movements because, but I understand it's just a question of time. I, I presume that's the reason, yes. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, for me, it's actually very important the structure of the suites. I feel very strongly there are six suites, each suite has six movements, and there is certain mathematical equation always there. I think it's one plus two plus three. There's prelude, which is always kind of independent, then alimant and courant, which are very much connected. And I always play attacker. Then there's a tiny break before sarabant, but then sarabant, menuets in this case, or bures and gavots in other things. And Zhik is makes another block. So it's one plus, plus two makes three. You know, it's, uh, numbers are mysterious <laughs> thing, but. I could talk about it all the rest of the time, but I won't. Don't worry. Anyway, I feel we kind of related in a way, strangely enough. Not be just because we have the same first name, but uh, <laughs> no, it's just coincidence. But um, you basically, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, in a way you are kind of a grandson of Stagorsky, uh, yeah. yes, <laughs> who was teacher of your teacher, yes? My first edition of this is, I wish, I mean, I'm so sorry that I didn't bring it, it's really ridiculous. I was so preoccupied with chess until last moment I left because uh, two, the world champion Magnus Carlsen, who is just something else, played the former world champion Vladimir Kramnik, who is a friend of mine. I drew with him. One game in the BFS, but that's another story. <laughs> anyway, we're very good friends. And uh, I was incredibly excited following chess and trying to feed one of my children and myself. And I forgot, I wanted to bring this, should have brought this, my very first edition of Bach suites. I have many, which my late brother gave it to me as a present when I was 11 years old. It's by Stogorsky. It's a wonderful edition. I treasure it until now, not just for emotional uh, reasons, but because as well it has, I don't know, you probably saw it, I know it or not. Huh? Yeah, okay. It has, uh, it, which at the time in Russia, in Soviet Union, it was really quite fantastic. It had not only printed uh, score, but as well the facsimile of Anna Magdalena, which at the time they thought it was Bach's own, but of course they found out that actually it's not, but which doesn't matter because they have practically identical, they had identical handwriting, that's why. It's amazing, actually. In some marriages, it happens. <laughs> anyway, that's another story. Anyway, but what I mean is beautiful. This, I think it's incredibly inspiring just to look at it. I, know, I hope you sometimes use it. I have in my home big, I made a huge print of Aleman from number six, which is the most cosmic music. And, it's always there. Uh, so this, and then, uh, then again, why the relation is as well, because I was incredibly lucky to study with Pitigorsky, who was a brother of Stagorsky. Real brother, not cousins, brothers. For those who don't know it, and probably most of you don't, it's kind of interesting little detail. Pitigorsky in Russian means five mountains. But after he left the Soviet Union very early after the revolution, his brother, who stayed there, changed his name to Stagorsky, which means 100 mountains. <laughs> uh, if he tried to make a point there, I don't know, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It, it could, could have been another way around, but, but it also doesn't matter. He was a wonderful cellist, teacher, musician, and very grateful to him for many things, particularly for you being one of his grandchildren, because he came from fantastic school. So I don't know what you want from me <laughs> here. <laughs> but uh, but uh, OK, we're not going to start uh, getting into each uh, note or whatever. Because in any case, there are so many different ways of playing almost any music. But the greater the music, the more possibilities there are. And it doesn't come any greater than Bach. It's Bach, there is reason why Bach has some kind of very special place in history of music, and not only music, 
something about Bach because it, probably it's the most universal music in a way. You know, I'm, before I made my second recording, I'm, I like gadgets. I'm not very good with them, but, but I like them anyway. So it was 1989. You were born already or not? No, probably not, actually. Wait a minute, it's 89, it was a very long time ago. Of course you were not born. Yeah. You were born? Yeah. Yeah. 89. No, no, of course not. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. So you don't, of course you can't remember. It was the time when mini disc came in the world. Oh, mini disc, it was such a fantastic invention. It was the first possibility. Now for you, it's from, what is this? <laughs> but it, no, but no, it was first possibility to switch the trucks around uh, like you can do on iTunes easily. But for us, it was a miracle. I, I have still at home, I will one day donate to some young cellist. I made copies of 32 recordings of Bach suites on mini disc and switched the order of the movement so I had 32 preludes, number one, 32 allemands, and so on. All six suites, 32 times. I had least, I made least. It's amazing because when you hear, you can hear like this. Because I have at home by now more than 50, 55 or different uh, recordings of Bach suites. I listen to all of them, many of them, many times. But, but then I chose 32, and it's really unbelievable because sometimes you barely can recognize it as the same music, literally, almost. I mean, I'm exaggerating, but it's amazing how different it can be. And, and it's fantastic. I always say there is hundreds or maybe thousands of playing Bach. And all of them, okay, except of two, which should be forbidden by law. Joke, of course. One should, nothing is forbidden. But if music, great music sounds ugly or boring, then something is wrong. Everything else goes. I mean, Bach's music was arranged in any possible way, and nobody succeeded to destroy it, no matter how hard they tried sometimes. But it's fantastic in jazz and in, in any way. It's amazing, really. And, um, you know, there's a very nice story I love in connection with me playing this first prelude sometimes very differently. I very often play it as a last encore with orchestra, and, and or even in the concert, if I played three suites and start with number one, uh, very often as a last encore at the end, I play the same prelude again, completely different, usually twice faster. Not if my wife is present, because she threatens to divorce me when she hears me playing it so fast. She thinks it's just horrible, because she played cello herself. She still does. But, uh, yep, 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 yep. Okay, that's fine. And, and of course, she thinks it's just terrible. Okay, doesn't matter. Anyway, but the point is, you know, it, it's a true story about Glenn Gould, who's one of the greatest musicians, not only for Bach, but Bach, who once came to the rehearsal with the orchestra, and doesn't matter which concerto it was, he asked conductor, so, how would you like me to play today? Twice faster than usual or twice slower? Because he could do it either way. Twice faster than usual or twice slower. And it's, um, I think it's great uh, art and uh, shows how this music can be just approached in so many different ways. And that's why this whole movement of, which is very important issue of this authentic way of playing Bach. I cannot help it but to touch it, if I may. Yeah. No, because, you know, I'm a great believer in authenticity. But I believe in authenticity of emotions. Whatever comes from the artist's heart is authentic to him at this particular moment. As far as playing Bach the way it used to be played in Bach's time, that's a totally different issue. I personally, and again, I always say that whatever I say, it's just my humble opinion, and I don't pretend to know the truth. Beware of people 
who preach the truth. Those are dangerous people who know the truth, you know. Because there are many different truths in life and many different ways playing Bach, of course. So in my opinion, Bach, for many reasons I don't agree with this whole attitude. Because Bach, like all great geniuses, was so much ahead of his time. It took Mendelssohn century after Bach's death to reintroduce his music in concert halls. And uh, at his, uh, in, during his lifetime, he wasn't even so famous as a composer, much more famous as an organist. So I think I sometimes say then, I dare to say that maybe he's even turning in his grave, knowing that in the 21st century, musicians exactly actually this year, 300 years since he wrote the suites and since the, my cello was built, we're celebrating anniversary. Uh, musicians trying to go 300 years back. I think it's, then again, when I say he turns his, his way, if I mean in the same breath, I said, I might be completely wrong. I never met him. And I don't pretend to communicate with him. There, is, there are many fantastic musician stories, and some, many of them with great German conductor, Otto Klemperer. And one of them about a uh, great singer, I don't know if you should mention the name, uh, very famous singer whom I admire very much. Maybe I can mention him. Fischer Disco, incredible musician, incredible singer. Uh, once he was young and the first rehearsal of some Bach oratorios, he did something in one area different than in the score. And Klemper, who was paralyzed like this, he said, Fischer, was machen Sie dort? What are you doing there? And he said, you know, Maestro, last night in my dreams, I met Johann Sebastian Bach. He told me, you're the greatest. And you can do this different than I wrote. And Klemper said, oh, let's see. Next day, another resource to the same place. Klemper stops and Fisher, last night in my dreams, I met Johann Sebastian Bach. He told me he doesn't know you. <laughs> <laughs> he never met you. That's it. No arguments. So that's what we all should remember. None of us met Bach and, and shouldn't pretend and know how. Not only, okay, I certainly believe, uh, agree that with musicological research nowadays, one can more or less, there are no recordings left, establish how this music was played during Bach time. Where I draw the line, and some, very few, but some people go, a little bit too far and pretend that they not only know how it was played, but they know how Bach would have liked it to be played today. You know, I have a book which I hope one day to manage to read complete, probably never will. I got this present from a very interesting musician by American philosopher, I found it recently again, I know where it is, called Authenticities. It's all about this whole issue. It's an incredibly complex philosophical essay. But he makes very simple and convincing argument. He says, the whole discussion is basically pointless and waste of time. Because it's the same like saying that, let's, for example, Herr Schmidt in Leipzig in 1720 decided to become shoemaker instead of airplane pilot. In 1720, Herr Schmidt didn't have this choice because there were no airplanes. Today, Herr Schmidt might become the airplane pilot or still shoemaker, but he would have choice. Bach didn't have choice. He had his small orchestra with instruments of the time, and he did fantastically well with it. And he makes this point. If you would resurrect him today and put him in New York, let's say, in every Fisher Hall or whatever, big concert hall, modern concert hall, with terrible acoustics, but that's, <laughs> and um, uh, offer him choice of 
playing his music with his orchestra and instruments of the time, or with New York Philharmonic. Maybe he would choose his orchestra, but maybe he would choose New York Philharmonic, and we will never know. So in one of my main models in life, leave and let leave. It's a very important attitude about being open-minded and tolerant about different religions to start with, different ideologies, different ways of thinking, dressing, eating, uh, and playing Bach or any other music. You know, there, were, there, was, uh, there were two very famous ladies, Bach specialists, so there. Wanda Landowska, Polish harpsichordist, and Rosalind Turek, the pianist. Very different in style, but both great musicians. The, the story goes, I don't know if it's true, of course, Then once they had heated argument about uh, how to play Bach. And it got a little, little bit um, intense, let's put it this way. And one of them, whichever one, doesn't matter, said, that's OK. You can play Bach your way, and I will play his way. <laughs> Whatever that means. Who knows what was his way? And to start, I mean, there are so many arguments when he was so progressive. Well-tempered clavier. Suites were written for cello, not for viola da gamba. Last suite for five-string cello. He experimented all the time. And I'm sure if Francois Tourte or somebody else 100 years earlier would invent modern bow, Bach would be the first one to use it in an experiment. So, you know, this whole attitude about trying uh, to be authentic, whatever that means. You know, I once read interview with Pierre Boulez, when one question was about this whole movement. He obviously didn't care too much. So he called them reconstructionists. And he said, it reminds me, it's like when somebody puts on his dinner table beautiful antique candlestick and thinks that he's in a court of Louis XIV. No matter what you put on your table or even dress in old outfits and put wigs and makeup and whatever, we're not in 18th, 17th, 18th century. We're in the 21st century, we play in different halls. We're surrounded by sounds which didn't exist at the time, which affect our uh, everything, and uh, we even breed much more polluted air, unfortunately. So nothing is the same, and uh, music for me personally, anyway, is very living thing. It it's continuously changes uh, and uh, evolves and, and matures, so to say, in your mind, and, and it's never the same, great music, and that's what makes it so incredibly exciting and fascinating for so many different musicians playing the same music or even for you to play the same music again and again. Yeah. So that's why mm -hmm. this whole idea, in my opinion, it's a bit, uh, I don't know, I shouldn't really use stronger words, but okay, I personally, with all due respect, disagree with uh, the whole uh, attitude. But then again, I learned a lot I knew quite well uh, Anner Bilsma. He was a fantastic man, really fantastic cellist. I mean, I'm sure you know. And uh, very interesting man, very intelligent, very uh, sense of humor. Really, really. I could tell you many stories, but it doesn't matter. Now we don't have time. We probably already run out of time, yes? Wait a second. When I started? No, no, I still have time. No, I kept the whole time, no? I no? What do you mean? I know, I know, I watch it. I start, we started exactly at 9 o'clock. <laughs> Discrimination, which cellists have to, less time than anybody else. Okay, I'll finish it. Okay, I mean, we'll never finish it anyway. So, But no, I'm talking about this. Okay, did you start Saraband down bow by chance? Because uh, by the repeat, you played up bow. Yeah. Or, or on purpose? Did you read? He has. He wrote big book about it. But but he wrote. There is a say about the sarabans, all six sarabans, and he makes interesting point. Then all sarabans, 
go into second bit. And that's why he thinks all Saruman should be should started up ball. Okay, I do start many of them up ball, not all, but it's not a question of balling. It's totally unimportant. It's just a question of direction and feel. The other thing, you know, I played, I was incredibly lucky. I met Pablo Casales and played for him uh, for an hour and a half, and then he talked for more than an hour. In, on the 18th of August, 1973, in Jerusalem, when he was almost 96 and a half, or more than, almost 97 years young. Anyway, I played for him D minor suite, number two. About Sarabans, he told me a very important point, which at the time I didn't comprehend. Sarabans are never in, in six. It should be three. So not too slow. You didn't do too slow, but, but still it could be a little bit more feeling of three. Yeah? That's one thing. Then the, the, before I forget, it's a very important point in, in general about so-called repeats. You didn't do second repeat again to save time or you norm yeah, okay, I understand. Because normally I think it makes sense to do both. Okay, doesn't matter. But in, anyway, I hate this word even, repeat, because what does it mean? Nothing in life repeats ever. And in music, the same. It's, there's certain continuity, which is incredibly important and not easy to recreate in your mind. I was looking, as I told you, my first edition I still treasure with Stagorsky. I have many different editions at home. I was looking for a perfect edition of Bach series. doesn't exist. But uh, one idea I got from producer in Japan, video producer, when I was recording one suite there. He made for himself the score by copying, cutting, and gluing together where so-called repeats are written out. And that's exactly what I was looking for years and couldn't find, of course. It doesn't exist. So when I recorded the second time, the GX Deutsche Grammophon experimented with CD plus score where there is additional computer program and they asked me to make edition of box suites and it's there. The only reason I agreed to do it because I think it, it, it was it's my biggest present to young cellists. Highly recommended. Not because of my boings and, and fingers and indications. This is, I write about it there. I change it myself all the time. And, but beauty of this program, which was made by Russian Israelis for them, uh, that you can change in the computer all of this, erase my stuff and put your own. So you can have your own edition. But there it's written out. Of course, if you print, it takes twice more paper and, uh, and but it helps enormously to, of course you can recreate this in your mind, but it's easier said than done, to feel this continuity. And there's nothing, and not have this copy-paste repeats, which happens much too often. And it's not only a question of different ornamentation or dynamics of the, it's certain intensity, certain energy and direction, because the end of the first half, when it goes so supposedly back to the, it's a question of timing, time which the composer needed to create certain energy in order to continue uh, the de development. See? And uh, it's, I think it's incredibly helpful. I highly recommend my own edition. <laughs> no, not because I don't get anything good. But uh, you can make it yourself. But, or try to do it in your mind. It's difficult, but possible, of course. But to, to get this long line, it's very, very important. I think. And then the, the Zig, you know, okay, yeah, Leonid is getting up and wants me to get the hell out of here. The Zig, it's, every movement has different, every dance has different character, and, and Zig, I think, could be a little bit more, yeah, more al dente, you know? You overcook a little bit, sometimes a little bit. But uh, anyway, anyway, this is not important, but uh, oh gosh, it's just ridiculous how little time uh, they give us. Uh, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but uh, uh, we'll we'll speak. Later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Bravo. You still have two minutes. Come on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you.